guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. This is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. <clears throat> I'm very excited. Stout season is back. I get to enjoy my my delicious cold stouts. Mm. This one is Galactic Cowboy Nitro. Uh, Imperial Stout. Very good stuff. Um, I was going to do this as a live stream, but I didn't put up enough of a notice so you guys could jump on. So I'm going to do this as a regular recorded video, but I'm going to do a live stream for you guys here probably in the next couple of weeks. Um, and I want to talk tonight about taking control. You know, right now, whether it's uh, election season and everything that's going on, whether it's a lot of the news that I pass on about divorce laws or custody laws or dating or a lot of it is, number one, out of our control as an individual. And number two, not the way we want things to go. And when I say we, I'm not talking about we with the election or we, just in general. A lot of times we may find, hey, you know what? I don't like the way things are going for me right now. And people can slip into one of two areas. Either A, I give up. I give up. That's it. Uh, I just, I'll, I'll, I'll complain. I'll get bitter. I'll get angry. And that's my world. Or there's the other half. They're like, well, it is what it is. Let's move on. Now, I tend to be in the it is what it is category. I like to do as much as I can to control it. But if I can't, raging against the machine doesn't do any good. It just puts you in a bad place. So tonight I'm going to talk about an article. It's called Building Your Resiliency, Taking Control of Your Life. This is on theartofmanliness.com. I'll leave a link below as I always do. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention before we get started, I want to share how why this came, this idea came up and why I think it's important because uh, Vice President-elect Biden, if he does become elected, he said he wants to revoke or change Section 230. And let me get recording on this so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Uh, President-elect said he signaled he wants to increase regulation of social media. He wants to revoke Section 230 or modify it heavily. Now, if it gets revoked completely, YouTube comment sections and a lot of videos on YouTube, I'd probably say 80% of YouTube goes away. Because whatever, whatever I'm saying becomes a representation of what YouTube thinks. And whatever you comment on my video becomes an extension of what YouTube thinks. And therefore, they can be sued. Which is why 230 uh, was introduced to allow websites like Twitter and Facebook and YouTube to be introduced. Now, I don't think he's going to get rid of it outright because that would ruin all social media. And they donated very heavily to the Democrat uh, Democratic Party. So I don't think that's going to happen. However, one thing he did say that concerns me personally, is it's going to create a new task force for online um, harm, harassing isms, and uh, and harmful harm specifically against women. Which means if you can view my content and say, well, I'm being critical of women, does that mean I'm being harmful? And if they say yes, poof, I'm gone. And this may carry over to other websites. So before you know it, men's channels may just not exist anymore. And then I have to do generic things and try to weave my messages in on, I don't know, stoicism or dating advice or something else. So, you know, a lot of channels could go away. Uh, but my big concern is also Title Nine. I wrote some of these down so I didn't forget. Title IX, uh, uh, I think her name's Betsy DeVos. I know her last name's DeVos. Trump put her in charge of the college Title IX stuff and... Prior uh, to the Title IX changes, a woman could say a guy did something inappropriate and he would basically, even if he had evidence to the contrary, he would be kicked out of college. He'd still owe the money and all the loans, and all the, but he wouldn't get his degree and he wouldn't be allowed on campus and that was the end of his. And then he could get smeared and it could get into public records just for an accusation. DeVos came in and changed that. So they said, hey, it's going to be like the court system. You have to have proof. The guy gets to have an attorney. They get to defend themselves. Well, Biden has said specifically he's going to get rid of that again. So it's going to go right back to where men don't have any protection. Those two things really worry me. And that's one of the reasons why I wasn't really pleased for the Biden administration. But <clears throat> how does this have to deal with us? We're going to talk about building your resiliency, taking control of your life. Now, if I if I get removed from uh, you know YouTube or whatever and I can't speak my mind anymore, I can't control that. Um, if I my video views and how my uh, algorithms and how many people are being suggested my videos are down about 30 or 40 percent over the last month or two. Can I control that? No, I can't. So I can sit here and rage against the machine again or you just say, hey, I, 
I, I'll just need to plan and make alternative ways to continue on. And that's being assertive and controlling your life. And the same thing goes when it comes to dating. When you say, you know what, I'm not giving a shot in dating. Do you keep hitting your head against the wall or do you just deal with it and move on? If you say, I'm struggling with weight loss or I'm struggling at the gym or I got fired from my job or the, because of the bug, things change for me. Those are all things that are out of your control. It's how you manage what happens to you and how you deal with it that is in your control. And those are the things I want to talk about today. Uh, I'm going to touch on this story a little bit. I'll leave the link below. It's a very good series. I think it's like a four-part series. I, I'd recommend reading through it. But they say, um, uh, a quote from Chuck Yeager, we lost 13 pilots in six months, and in, ev and nearly, ev and in nearly every case, the worst pilots' uh, lives were ended by their own stupidity. And uh, so they, they start off, among test pilots, Chuck Yeager's attitude towards pilots who augured in was universal. In The Right Stuff, Tom Wolf relates how test pilots love to talk about flying at every chance and how the discussion would inevitably turn to why the latest pilot to have perished in an accident had done himself in. It was always the pilot's fault. Even if a piece of equipment had malfunctioned, the consensus was that the pilot should have double-checked it before taking off. Nearly every perishing accident was caused by pilot error, plain and simple. To the average Joe, this might seem like a callous attitude, but when you're going to a funeral every other week, bury, burying a guy who uh, who's doing the same job as you, you have to believe that you're in control of your life, 100%. Otherwise, you're never going to get in that cockpit pit again. These men had the right stuff. Their unshakable belief in their ability to control their destiny set them apart from other men. You may not be flying planes, but you too can stop being the victim. Strap into the cockpit and take control of your life. You know, I thought this was an, kind of an interesting quote because obviously it could be the plane, especially if it's a test plane. Obviously, something could have gone wrong with the plane. But if a pilot gets in that plane and de determined to test pilot it, and he's afraid something's wrong with the plane, he'd be scared. He wouldn't do it. So they gave themselves the mindset that no matter what is up with the plane, I will be fine as long as I keep my head about me. And that's kind of the same thing that we need to do today. The courts may be against you if you get in trouble or if you're blamed of something or you get married. So how do you handle that? Well, number one, you don't get married. You don't put yourself into a situation where the court can have that kind of control over you. If you find, hey, the dating apps aren't working out for me or I'm not getting the attention or I don't have the number of friends I'd like, what do you do? You can say, woe is me and get angry at the world and blame it on things that are out of your control. Or you can say, okay, I'm going to take control of this. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to change my diet. I'm going to stop getting on those dating apps. I'm going to stop worrying about dating. I'm just going to focus on the things that I can handle. And once you do that, it starts putting your mind in the right mindset to deal with this kind of thing. They continue on feeling in control, the foundation of your resiliency. In the last part of our series, oh, I don't want to read that part. <clears throat> I want to leave that for you guys that decide to read it because I don't want to talk about this study. They say, um, being, in, being effective, changing things, influencing things, making things happen is one of the fundamental needs with which human brain seems to be naturally endowed. And much of our behavior from infancy onward is simply an extension of this penchant for control. The fact is that human beings come from the world with a passion for control. They go out of the world the same way, and research suggests that if they lose their ability to control things at any point between their entrance and exit, they become unhappy, helpless, hopeless, and deeply sad, and occasionally not living anymore. Um, I'm going to use, uh, uh, again, not to get too deep into politics, but look at Trump derangement syndrome, whether you really hate Trump or you really like Trump. A lot of people hate him, and they go about doing protests and effigies and lighting things and rioting and doing all these other things just to show how much but if you look on social media for a lot of these people, they also talk about how they don't feel like things are fair and it's this or that faction's fault, not just in politics, but in many other ways, uh, especially a lot of the women's groups that are making fun of men or saying it's the patriarchy's fault or it's men's fault or it's society's fault or it's everybody's fault but myself. Oftentimes they're unhappy because they feel like everything that is happening to them is not in their control. Now, 
Are things out of your control? Yes. Does it directly affect you? If the answer is no, then don't worry about it and move on. And if it is directly in your control, then change it, modify it, and find a way around it that you have no other choice because otherwise you're just going to have this dread about you. Having internal versus external locus of control. Now, I did a video on this already, um, so I'm not going to dive into this too much, but basically those with an internal locus of control or an internal uh, place of control are confident that they can be sex successful, tend to be leaders, exhibit greater control over they, their behavior, seek to learn as much as they can, take personal responsibility for their actions, deal with challenges and stress better, use challenges to come out stronger than before, thrive in the midst of change, are less likely to submit to authority. How many of the us does that sound like? The way I've, I hear a lot of you guys speaking, this sounds like a lot of us. We don't just submit to authority. We always are looking for new ways to learn things and new things to study. We take responsibility when things screw up that are our fault. But let's listen to these. This is important too because I find this seems to be the mass majority of people that at least you hear on social media today that are making the most noise. Those with an external locus of control feel like they're a victim, are quick to blame everyone but themselves, want to be led by others, avoid responsibility, are more prone to stress, anxiety, and deep sadness. Sounds like a lot of these profiles that we read out there. Those with an internal locus of control are achievement-oriented and likely to find academic and professional success <clears throat> because they believe they're in control of their destiny. And again, the others do not. Um, here they talk about uh, you know not being... A, a victim and taking control of your life and and this is kind of interesting because it's men that seem to have the most internal locus as as we well know men are most more likely to have an internal locus of control than women per, when perhaps explains why rhetoric rhetoric about being the captains of our destiny has always deeply resonated with us and i would personally argue that much of our current crisis in manhood can be traced to men shifting from that natural mode of behavior to handling control of their lives over to external forces. Everything today is not our fault, but is rather the res result of a an addiction or imbalance of chemicals or a disease. The good news is that while your up upbringing shapes your locus of control, it's possible to change it and become more internal than external. Um, I think this is something that, that I've noticed more is that when the external society blames a lot of problem on men, and this is, I think, why we don't go out and protest. We don't go raise the roof. We don't make a lot of noise about it is because, at least from my standpoint, and I think a lot of guys' standpoint, we don't think we're going to be given a fair shake. You know, if I try to do a video from a fair stance of this is how we as men feel and this is it seems how women feel, or they're, how they're acting, all of a sudden we're called bad names and we hate people and we're this and that. And none of that's true. And so instead of fighting that, again, we take control of our lives and we decide, okay, we're just going to separate ourselves from that and we're going we're gonna to head off in this direction by ourselves, which is the guys going their own way kind of philosophy. And instantly, they come chasing after us trying to say that we're things that we're still not. We just want to be left alone and we want to talk in our groups about our issues so that new people or younger guys can kind of understand what's going on. Still, they come after us. Well, when you now see advertising, when you see commercials, when you see social media, when you see new laws, when you see all these things piling up against men, it becomes very hard to, to rely on your self-control, your self-reliance, and on yourself because it seems everything else out there is telling you you're wrong. That if you think this way, you're wrong. That if you are this way, you are a bad person. And, and then the people that you may care about in your lives, which may include family members, it may include girlfriends, it may include other friends, are telling you, hey, no, you're wrong. That, that it's bad to think of yourself as a strong individual, as an individual. You are part of a group. You have to have herd mentality. You have to allocate or assign yourself to this other like-minded thinking group. And if you don't, we don't accept you. And I've, I've noticed this um, even in some of the, the news channels that I watch, that if they bring out a, a, a you know, they may have a million followers or something, and if they bring out a, a, a point that is counter to the other narrative that they speak about, in other words, if they say, I think A is going to happen, A seems like it's looking good, I like the idea of A, and then B happens, and then they turn around and say, well, 
here's B and here's what's going to happen with B, a lot of people say, how dare you talk about B? Go back to talking about A. And that's not how the real world works. You need to be able to control what is happening so you can switch your mind, switch your direction, and, and be open to other possibilities. It doesn't mean you have to accept them. It doesn't mean that you have to like them. It just means you need to understand and adapt accordingly, like with divorce laws. Divorce laws state in many cases, men are going to lose custody. Men will pay child support. Men will pay alimony. No matter what happens, the man is going to be blamed for the relationship failing. If there's harm done in the house and uh, it, either party comes out and says it happened to them, the guy is going to be blamed. That's just the way it is. Now, you can be angry. You cannot accept this. However, more than likely, you can't change it. So you have to adapt. And how are men adapting? They're not getting married anymore. They're dropping out of relationships. They're becoming more reclusive. They're not taking part in social media as much. They're not, uh, their, their group of friends is becoming smaller, but more important, you, you can make a smaller, stronger group of friends and then instead of a large, loosely associated group of friends because the smaller, uh, tight-knit group is actually healthier. That's why communities like mine and others are thriving because men today feel like they don't belong anywhere. And this can be very isolating. Well, when you can't control that, when you can't change that, all you can do is adapt, understand that it is the way it is, understand that it's okay to be an individual, understand that you may not necessarily align with anybody, and that's okay as long as you're happy with who you are. And if you sacrifice that who you are to become a part of another group, you'll be sad on two counts. Number one, you're not doing what you truly want to be doing, and you're giving that up. And number two, you're being a fraud, and you're being fake person in the group that you're actually a participant in. So you're not a real person. They're not seeing you as your authentic self. This is a double loss. And I think this happens for a lot of people today is in that they're trying to make others happy. They're trying to fit in because if they're authentic and they say, I don't belong to any of you and I'm going to do my own thing. And maybe that means that I spend a big portion of my time alone or uh, away from other people. I'm okay with that, and a lot of people are, and, that, and, and that's what I'm saying you have to take control of, is to understand that you have to find out who you are first, not where you belong. Not, find out who you really are, and once you find out who you really are, then you can go about finding other like-minded people, but if you change who you really are to fit in with other people, it never ends well. Taking control of your life by strengthening your problem-solving abilities. So the key to taking control of your life is to strengthen your problem-solving skills. As you do so, you will gain the confidence and the belief that you can tackle whatever challenges come your way. To do this, Dr. Siebert suggests using and strengthening three different problem-solving methods. Analytical problem-solving. We as men should excel at this kind of problem solving. It involves using logic, analysis, and reason to come up with solutions. To apply these tools, Dr. Siebert recommends talk, uh, taking the following steps when faced with a problem. Number one, get an accurate understanding of the problem. Ask questions, research, observe. Get as much info about what's happening as you can. You notice in that segment, they do not talk about your emotions. It's just analyzed. That's it. Number two, ask yourself, what do I want? What is your desired outcome? Then this is where you analyze uh, the information, the research, everything you've gotten together. Number three, come up with two or more potential solutions to the problem. Weigh the pros and the cons of each. I even have recommend many, many, many times, I was looking for my piece of paper, making a grid. Take a notebook, pad of paper, line it in half. Pros, cons. Okay, if I leave my current job and go find another job, Here's all the things, and then you do the cons or the, the against. Do the same thing with relationships. Do the same, and sometimes writing it out before you know it, you'll see the for is this long and the against is this long, or vice versa, and it may help you kind of visualize, and then you can kind of rank things, and all of a sudden you you may have a choice right in front of you that you thought might have been hard. It might be a lot easier once it's out on paper in a kind of a physical tangent way to look at it. Number three, uh, or excuse me, I did that one. Uh, number four, take action. Pick a solution and throw yourself into carrying it out. Number five, take stock of the effects of your actions. What's working? What isn't? 
Number six, learn from the feedback you get. Fine tune your approach to be more effective. Number seven, modify your efforts. It's a very simple laundry list of things to do. Get some research. Try to figure out what you want to do. Is this going to be a good or bad thing for me? What are the points that may or may not work out? How is it working? Do I need to change? How do I think I'm doing? Modify as needed. And you can do this with anything, whether it's a relationship, your job, uh, anything that concerns you. And sometimes getting it on paper, getting it in a tangible way and making a decision, all the stress is gone. You know, I was in a job that I hated. I, I was a network engineer for a company. The job I loved, my manager, I really disliked. And because he was kind of a brown nosing uh, yes man, and he would throw his employees under the bus to save himself. And so I was very unhappy there. And without any other job lined up, without a lot of money saved, well, I had a good amount of money saved, let me correct that, but not enough where I could retire. And at the age of 44, I just said, I walked in one day, we got into a bit of a disagreement. He wanted me to release or let go of some employees at Christmas time. He said, we've got to get rid of four people because we don't have the salary anymore. And I said, no, that's your job as a manager. He said, I've selected you as the team lead to do it. And I said, no. And I was done. And I left. And driving home, I was laughing. Number one, because it felt like the weight of the world was off my shoulders. And number two, I had nothing lined up. And I thought I was crazy for doing what I just did. However, it opened me up to all the possibilities in the world where before I thought I'm going to be at this desk until I, I'm like the end of my days. So, um, and, and they're going to dive in a little deeper. I'm going to cut it here. Uh, we're about mm, two thirds of the way through, but I'm going to stop it here. Uh, but the, the takeaways, and please read this. I would recommend it. It's a good way to kind of work down through things. This is a, a great four-part series, theartofmanliness.com. Um, but the important takeaway is this. Look, things in your life are not going to be the way you want them. And we talk about them here on this channel. A lot of times you guys say, man, I listen to these videos and I get so bummed out. I got to turn it off. Or three minutes into this video, thing, I, I just feel like I can't deal with it anymore. Understand, I understand that. But understand that this is me making fun of things. This is me bringing things to light. This is me talking about things that may affect us. It doesn't it doesn't mean you're painted in a corner and you don't have any choice in life. It means the choices you previously may have wanted or the job that you may have wanted or the career or the relationship or the marriage or the kids, things that you planned on in life may not work out the way you want. You can complain about it. You can be unhappy about it. You can be miserable, miserable about it. You can be deeply sad about it. Or you can come to the realization that it is what it is you modify the way that you're going to handle this. You change your life according you, accordingly. You act accordingly. And while in the beginning it may seem that you're sacrificing things and you're not going to be happy because you're going off in a completely different direction, the end result may turn out better than you want. You know, almost exactly a year ago, the first week of November of 2019, I had... 500 followers on my YouTube channel here. I was an ex-engineer. I was building a bus. I needed to find a job, but I was going to build my bus first. I could survive off my savings until the bus was done. And then I was going to get in the bus, drive across the country and find a new job. I left everything behind, traveled the world, made all these big changes in my life. And one day I decided to complain on a YouTube video. And then I just kept complaining and I just kept talking. And my channels evolved. I've evolved. And here I am about a year later with 235,000 followers. I am now a, a YouTuber. I didn't see that a year ago. I didn't see that, you know, a year and a half ago when I first started talking on YouTube. Things change, but they can be for a plus. If I set out to become a YouTuber and I failed, I'd be disappointed. But it was just kind of, hey, let's, let's try this for a little while. A lot of life is going to be, uh, again, like they say, Pick something, experiment, modify as needed, change your mind, and reevaluate. So as things are not going well for you guys, I understand that things may not be turning out the way that you want them to. That's okay. You have two choices. You can either wallow in misery and say, woe is me, and this is unfair, or you can say, you know what? This isn't the way I want things to be, but I'm, gonna, I'm still going to be a survivor. I'm going to live my 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 live my life the way I best can and modify things and go a different direction and see how it turns out. Life is full of those twists and turns. 
And oftentimes, they turn out better than you might have uh, even believed in. And even if they don't, you may still learn something before you walk away from that path to try a different one. Uh, guys, I don't know if this helps any, but I thought I'd put a little... Because even I'm a little bit bummed out right now because of the, the changes to Title IX, and that's really not good for men. The changes to what may be coming to channels like mine or, or Section 230 and YouTube and all that. All that kind of is not great news. All you do is you buckle down, you make plans to modify, and, and you go from there. Speaking of modification, um, I have my channel, uh, betterbachelor.locals.com, if you'd like to join me over there. And if you don't, and you've uh, supported me directly, uh, you can do so in the links below, and thank you if you have. And the best way you can support me is like, comment, share, subscribe, and check out my older videos. Uh, guys, I'll leave it there. This is Better Bachelor. I'm Joker. Remember, life's not going to always be the way you want it to, but when you hit a... a, a either a crisis or an adverse moment, adapt, modify, and overcome.